Hey, what's up you guys? Have y'all ever had just one of those days where you're just overwhelmed and uh, can't seem to get anything done? Well, it's now 4.30. I've been trying to come down here beside our sign to uh, weed eat a little bit. Finally made it. And then when I get down here, look at what we've got. The task at hand is pretty huge. So we were just down here a couple of days ago and I was showing you guys this area. But look at how much the weeds have grown in, in just a couple days we've been getting a lot of rain we just got rain an hour ago but look at some of these weeds i mean it is just covered in here so this video is definitely going to spill into tomorrow which is saturday and it's going to be pretty and probably pretty busy but i'm gonna try to get down here because as i said in the previous video the road is right here and this is like a focal point with our sign and the water wheel. So we've got to get this thing cleaned up no matter what. Look at the, I mean, this is a weed. This whole entire plant is a, a weed. And all over there, it's really overwhelming. But we're gonna go ahead while we got just a little bit of time here and the nursery slowed down because of the rain. Go ahead and get on the weed eater. See if we can't knock some of these down and make a little headway for tomorrow. Well, y'all, that was some pretty good stress relief right there. Uh, this is the first electric weed eater that I've had, a little DeWalt 20 volt, but I really like that thing. So I just took, kind of skimmed over this knoll area right here, but there were some plants in there that I forgot we even planted. Got this cool Asiatic jasmine right here that I almost cut down because you just couldn't see it. The daggum weeds were so high. I had to be real careful. We'll have to do some hand weeding up in the roses and areas like that, but at least we got us some headway. And now tomorrow we can get down here and hand weed, especially around, like I almost got this little guy. This is a uh, Goldilocks, I do believe. Yeah, this is a um, little dwarf pine called Goldilocks. So we'll get in here, get all these weeds ripped out tomorrow. Hopefully if we have time, come in, fertilize everybody and lay us a nice new pretty thick coat of mulch and see if we can't choke these weeds out we've got some beautiful roses down here our uh, maroon colored hibiscus is coming back out glad to see that made it through the winter even looks like there's another one tucked up in here still a lot of hand weeding to do but that's okay at least we got the bulk of it kind of knocked down gonna have to prune this rose up here a little bit it's a big knockout She's kind of choking out some other stuff around her. So we'll get down here, do a little hand weeding, a little hand pruning. But at least we, uh, we got us a jump start today. So we'll get back at it real soon. Hey guys, we are back again, getting uh, back to our sign project down yonder. Today is Sunday. Yesterday was an absolute madhouse here. There was no way we were gonna make it down to do any planting yesterday. It was just insanity. Again, great problem to have, but there was no outside extracurricular activities yesterday. So 
We just fed the birds up back in the greenhouse like we do every Sunday. Now we're gonna pick us out some plants to take down to the sign to plant. I've got our little golf cart back here loaded up with um, all of our biotone products so that we can plant these things and give them the best chance for success. So y'all help me pick out a few things and let's take them down there and get them planted. We are racing some thunderstorms per usual. I don't know what it is with my YouTube videos, but uh, we've just had a lot of rain and storms here lately. And it seems like every time I try to go do something, we're always running from storms. So I'm gonna shut up, let's go get to work. I really wanna take one of these tropical hibiscus down there, even though it won't survive through the winter. Uh, I think it'll just look really pretty and we'll get, you know, six, seven months of bloom time uh, out of it down there. And I'm curious to see how it'll do planted in that nice rich soil down there. We'll throw it in the back of our cart here and then let's go pick out something else. Let's try some of this uh, Proven Winners Vista Paradise. Actually, this one's Vista Fuchsia. We'll try them both. Let's get a Vista fuchsia and then let's try this new paradise right here it'll give us some color down there on that that hill in front of the sign and then i can't just keep walking past these gerber daisies they just look fantastic so let's take maybe a red one down there and see how it does and i really like to try to incorporate some more perennials down there i'm trying to do that at home too just because annuals are beautiful and everything, but you know, you have to plant them every year, whereas your perennials come back. So trying to cut down on the amount of work that we're doing. So let's take this uh, Cheddar Pink's Fire Witch. This is a um, Dianthus. Let's take it down there and plant it and see how it does. And then we can compare it to this uh, Paint the Town Magenta Dianthus from Proven Winners. That one looks really nice too. Very similar plants, so uh, this kind of will give us a, uh, you know, just a little test to see which one we like better. And then let's take some guara down there. This is one of my favorite perennials, common name, uh, I believe is Indian feather. Just real nice, pretty little flowers, real drought tolerant plant. Probably gets, I don't know, two to three feet tall, maybe two wide, something like that. Let's take one of these and then love this vermilionaire kufia from Proven Winners. It's just a cool, cool plant. Um, we've got a couple of these at the house. So let's take one down to the sign along with this, uh, this guara here. Then we've got to try one of these dahlias. Um, I've not grown a lot of dahlias, but Proven Winners just came out with this, this new one. So we're going to take one of these down here. I'm kind of liking... Let's go with this pink one right here. And then what else do we need to take? Some sedum wouldn't be bad. Let's take one of these lemon coral sedums right here and plant it kind of maybe up near the brick, let it trail down. All right, I'm gonna save a little bit of space in our wagon here. We're gonna go down to the nursery right now and pick out a few shrubs. I just can't wait to get on the road again. And we've got customers trying to get in on a Sunday. Sorry, we're closed. And I get us a shovel before we forget. Now let's go pick out some shrubs. All right, guys, let's go see what we can find. I definitely know I want some more panicle hydrangeas, so we're gonna see what we've got down here. But first, real quick, if you guys see all of these um, these sign post things that we've just installed and wondering what they are, that's where we're gonna put our informational uh, little brochures about the plant that's in each row. Just because sometimes it gets so busy, we can't help everybody, and you know, there's a lot of plants down here. It's hard to remember exactly what each plant does. So that'll help customers kind of better help themselves when we can't get to every single person. But anyway, back to plants. Let's see what we got down here. Let's we'll start down here on this end. Looks like we have got from first editions. This is Little Hottie. Oh, that's pretty. Hopefully y'all can see that picture. Look at the blooms on that thing. Definitely need one of these. 
and then we'll come back and see what the all those proven winners are and our hibiscus has fallen over slide him over a little bit got a limelight prime already got one of those down there uh, baby lace might not be a bad one to add let's do that we'll pull our little drip stake out let's throw one of these in and then we got room for about two more plants i wonder if we should do some more hydrangeas or should we maybe throw in some abelia i'm kind of really liking this radiance abelia down here let's get one of them and try it out find their little drip stake where'd you go there you are on the back side get that out that's a really nice shrub there looks like it gets uh about three by three three foot tall three foot wide we definitely can find a spot for him down there and as muggy as it's feeling out here right now i mean it is probably 85 and the humidity of like 150 that's why all these thunderstorms are building up so let's go with what we got let's go down there and get those planted just in case i don't want to fill this thing up and then we get caught in a rainstorm so let's haul butt down there and get to digging some holes Let's back her on up right here so we can offload our stuff a little easier and try not to run over anything right there. If that water wasn't so dirty, I would suggest we uh, get in and cool off. But it's pretty green and pretty nasty, so maybe we'll just stick our feet in the creek later. Um, let's see, where do we even start? I want to show you guys too um how we're going to come in and fertilize some of these stuff that's already existing and i guess somebody tried to help me yesterday and i brought a couple plants down and planted one and left two so hey give them an a for effort for at least trying to help but you can you see a huge difference from the other day from when we started and then one of the guys came down and kind of uh, took the lawnmower and cut the grass a little bit more and raked up all, everything that we we needed So we just got to kind of pick a, a few little areas of where we're gonna plant Tend to them because we don't think we're gonna have, well We're not gonna have time to do everything. I want to do down here today we Need to get rid of this old abutilon. Hey, actually look here That's really surprising This is uh, one that's not really supposed to be well not supposed to be hardy at all this is Chinese lantern, a butylon, really beautiful shrub. I stuck it down here last year and it got pretty sizable. I was fixing to rip it up, but that's pretty cool that it's actually coming back. It made it through the winter. I have to make mental note of that. Let's grab our tropical hibiscus first and find a good spot for him to go. Definitely want him to be visible and seen so maybe we can just kind of throw him, just throw him maybe right there. And I'm gonna come hook you guys over here to the fence cause I can't do very much with one hand and I'm gonna go grab a few more shrubs. And I think we'll take our Radiance Abelia and we're gonna replace this Lord Pedalum he didn't do too good, so we're going to rip him up, throw that uh, abelia in. It'll give some nice contrast on that fence right there. And then I was out of camera range, but we're going to put the kufia right there, and then the guara right here on this corner. Then this beautiful Gerber daisy, we definitely want it front and center. So I think we'll put it probably, let's go right here on the front side of that mound. And then these dianthus, they only get six inches tall. So we've got a sprinkler head right there. If you can see that where my foot is. So we need to kind of keep low growing stuff. We've got some Asiatic Jasmine in there, 
but we need some low growing stuff so it doesn't block the water so maybe let's plant these guys something like that and then we can watch the two in comparison and then as we continue out towards the road let's go ahead and just stick this dahlia in right there now i got to find somewhere to stick this uh lemon ice seed them i was going to put him up by the brick but it's already full up yonder so let's maybe just put him let's just put him right here that'd be a good little spot for him then maybe he can kind of trail down that hill and this fuchsia um, vista paradise probably wouldn't be bad to plant near that coral sedum so maybe we'll just throw him right there on the hillside and then i dropped our other guy didn't realize he was in my hand and he fell of course into the rose bush so we're gonna get all scratched up and get him out okay sorry this is the the fuchsia one now i want to see the color difference between that um, paradise vista versus this fuchsia vista but i don't want them on top of each other because that might look kind of stupid so why don't we just come maybe over here with this uh, beautiful yellow rose right there and we'll throw him in right there now that i got my pruners we can come in and go ahead and cut this abutilon down i'm doing it with my left hand because i'm holding you guys on my right so i'm struggling just a little bit but i think we could do it and we did it get that tossed out of the way that way this guy can come on back out and do his thing all right let me get on that shovel because these clouds are building pretty damn quick all right we've got our biotone just gonna throw that right there let's go ahead and see how quick we can pop this old lower pedalum out i think this area might have been just a little too wet for that lower pedalum you see how wet that soil is the abelia should handle it better still is not gonna love it but this is just kind of a little low lying area let's go ahead and get him ripped out of here pretty soil down here though nice and rich we just got these weeds everywhere so sooner the better that we can get that load of mulch in here and after we get stuff planted we really need to get that mulch laid nice and thick around here in this whole area There's some beautiful soil down here nice sandy loam topsoil type we're just going to etch us out nice hole saving our native soil on the side so we can easily put it right back as always and that looks like that's about deep enough right there all right now we got our hole dug just like we want it we're going to open up our bag of biotone here and for a three gallon i'm probably going to put oh, i don't know two to three cups i'm going to sprinkle some just all in the bottom of the hole here and this is going to give it the start that it needs the um, of course all of the beneficial microbes as well as just a good organic fertilizer give a few smacks on our our pot right here and set it in the hole and we're a little bit too deep so we'll take some of this soil that we've uh, stacked on the outside of the hole here mix it down mix it in with our biotone and the other soil we just put in there get this big old weed out of the way and let's try again and that's about the right depth right there let me grab you guys so you can get a little closer closer look but if i take my hand and slide it right across I'm hitting just slightly below the root ball of the plant, which is what we want. We don't want to plant it too deep. As I say in all my planting videos, we want to leave it just slightly 
either equal to the root ball to the soil level or slightly above and that's only about a quarter inch above so that's about perfect right there so then what we're going to do i'm actually going to take just a little bit more biotone here it's kind of hard to get the bag open and hold the camera in the same same time i'm just going to take that biotone i'm going to rub it all around the root ball go ahead and get it in contact with those roots and get our limbs out of the hole and we're simply just gonna gonna backfill with the soil that we excavated out of the hole we're gonna do this all the way around it and then we're gonna go jump on another planting and hurry up for these storms get here we'll just go all the way around we're gonna not pack it down around the root ball we're just going to kind of lightly press it in. We don't want to choke those roots out, but we don't want big air pockets either because the air pockets will allow the roots to dry out. Just going to grab that soil and just firmly press it all the way around the root ball. And that looks about perfect right there we don't need to add any more fertilizer right now the biotone is going to do all that for us now we just got to get some mulch in here as soon as possible for these weeds start coming back now we're going to come over here and put this tropical hibiscus and the two panicle hydrangeas and the spots that we put them and we're going to plant them in the exact same way that we did that abelia just now a little bit of biotone and not plant them too deep and I think this tropical hibiscus is going to love being planted in some soil. I've only usually done them in pots, so I'm excited to see how big this one will get now that we're putting it in some good soil and see what it can do this summer. All right, now let's plant this little one gallon kufia down here, the vermilion air. And this one is a perennial. Mine has come back at the house, even though we had that big cold back during Christmas. I thought that it may not make it, but thank goodness it did. We got some rock down there. Some big big rock so I think we're just gonna have to kind of plant on top of it but the hole's deep enough anyhow so that should work out I'm gonna throw a little biotone in here for the one gallon I'll probably just use I don't know a cup cup and a half something like that the great stuff about or the great thing about this stuff is you can't really I mean of course you can overdo it but it's all organic so as long as you don't get too crazy with it, you shouldn't have to worry about burning your plants. We'll just kind of nestle him right down in there a little bit and then pack our soil lightly back around him. And again, the most important thing is, and what I'm worried about, is having time to get mulch down in here so that we can cover up all these weeds and uh, keep new ones from sprouting and also just keep the existing ones at bay there we go and we'll go ahead and just put our tag in there so the customers come down here they can kind of walk around and see the mature plant and know what it is but that's that one so now we got to go around here and plant our few little annuals and that seed them and we'll be about done okay guys had to go run and get another battery for the gopro here as you can see we got our tropical hibiscus in we've got our hydrangeas our abelia <laughs> and i stupidly laid the hose pipe right there and now it's spraying us but we've got to get all this stuff watered in now just wanted to get, show you guys that all planted our proven winners petunias our gerber daisy we put our dahlia up here and our dianthus this will be a real good test uh, as you know which one outperforms the other 
I know you guys hear me talk about proven winners a lot, and they do make fantastic stuff, but um, you know they don't pay me anything to say any of this about their products. They just make great products. So we're gonna do a real test to see which one does better. So you guys just follow along on the channel here, and you can watch with us, and we'll see which one does better. I planted a few little petunias that somebody brought down yesterday and left. That's lovey dovey, real nice star-shaped petunia and still got to get in here and do the hand weeding but it's getting kind of late in the day so i want to get this stuff watered in and then we're also going to come around here in a second we've got to do a little pruning and some staking on that japanese maple so let's get this stuff watered in real quick and we'll go around there and work on that jap maple even though we got storms coming i can kind of see them building off in the distance there my luck is if I don't go ahead and water these plants in now, then it won't rain. So we're just going to go ahead and, and take the, the guess out of, guesswork out of it and get them watered in good. We're going to water all the way around, not just the root ball of the shrub, but just you know a couple feet out and saturate the ground entirely right around the new planting. And so right over here, close to the wheel, and also underneath our new shed that Luis built, we've got this really top-heavy Japanese maple. And it's just got way too much on it. We're gonna prune it up a little bit. Now is not the time to be pruning a Japanese maple. However, look at what's happening. As the wind blows, this thing is just rocking around. And I mean, that, my hand's off of it. The wind is really about to rip that thing out of the ground. It's just got way too much foliage up top. Plus, if we let these outer limbs continue, they're going to be problematic for our roof. So we're going to prune her up real quick, try to encourage some more upright growth. And then I'm going to show you guys how to use the Espoma tree tone. And we'll fertilize this guy so that we can get some, you know, some really good upright growth, as well as just help it. Uh, due to the fact that we're pruning it at the wrong time. So I'm gonna take my Felcos, come in here, and we're gonna give it a pretty severe haircut. Again, I do not suggest doing this this time of year, pruning this heavily on any tree, especially Japanese maples, but it just really needs to, to be done. So I'm gonna get rid of all these lower limbs. And the, these are the ones out here really catching a lot of the a lot of the wind make sure you guys can see i've got y'all hooked onto a shovel right here uh hey this is real life youtube stuff here guys so you see this big old limb right here we're going to pretty much get rid of about two-thirds of him got a lot of little small wispy limbs on the interior i'm going to get rid of those just kind of open up the center of this tree the wind is really kicking because those storms are building and they are coming this way so get rid of that get rid of that just kind of a general haircut then any of these interior limbs we're going to open up allow some light down through the canopy and just reduce the uh the wind drag from having just too much foliage that looks about right right there i'm gonna find a piece of bamboo real quick in fact we got one right over here and i didn't bring my tape gun down so just for the time being until i can get back down here with that i'm just going to offer some support by shoving that bamboo in there then he can just kind of rest up against that bamboo pole now let's go ahead Get y'all readjusted where you can see. Now let's go ahead and apply our, our tree tone. This is great for really any tree. What we want to do is peel back some of the soil around the perimeter of the root ball. It's just going to make us like a little donut shape right here, a couple inches 
um, wide and very shallow because what we're going to do is just take and sprinkle this tree tone right around in that ring and then it's very simple all we want to do is cover that back up that'll hold the fertilizer in place and then when we get rain here in just a little bit it can carry all those nutrients and microbes down into the soil and then this thing will have a much better chance at surviving what we just did to it because that's a big a big change and also any of these limbs heading towards the roof we're going to go ahead and take our felcos and just snip those right off probably going to go ahead and just get rid of this whole guy right there now that'll encourage upright growth and out away from the roof well there you have it folks we uh, at least got something done on this beautiful sunday but it's about five o'clock now and i'm ready to go get something cold to drink we worked hard down here so you guys deserve a little something to drink too so let's go do that i hope you guys will consider liking and subscribing the channel so you can follow along as we continue to plant down here and as we continue just to monitor these plants and see how they do so we can give you accurate feedback on the plants that we sell here at grassroots nursery so again thank you guys very much always remember the more you know the more you grow see you on the next video y'all